executive president's team member 15k carla sandoval take it away beautiful all right all right thank you can you hear me okay yes yes can you hear me okay? Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, you guys. Sorry for the like plain, boring background. We are in the middle of moving. And uh, I got to tell you, first and foremost, first of all, congratulations to everybody. I, I don't know if you can type on the chat, where are you from? I don't know if you guys are all from Florida or where you're from. And first of all, thank you guys for those of you guys who have your cameras on. Um, I cannot pronounce your name. Cortland? All right. Cortland, Teresa, Andrea, Nicole, BJ, Maya. Okay. <laughs> Nicole. Okay. Let me see who else here. Andrea, Teresa, Jim, and Becky. Okay. And for those of you guys, uh, Nicole, drive safely, but just listen. Thank you. Even if you're driving, I appreciate you guys is having your cameras on. Okay. Um, but you know, first and foremost, the, 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 uh, the, the, Daytona, South Joe, South Georgia. Okay, so you're not all from Florida. All right, very cool. St. Augustine, all right, thank you, thank you. Wisconsin, awesome. Well, first of all, congratulations for all of you guys for qualifying to this qualification call. Like uh, Jennifer said, my name is Carla, and uh, I did not know that. So here's a fun story for you, Jennifer. There are only two last families that immigrated from Mex from Spain to Mexico with the last name Sandoval. So either we are or we're not. Like it's not like the Smiths where there's like a ton of lineages. So maybe we're related. I don't know. Let's just pretend we are, okay? <laughs> um, and I hope I look like you when I grow up, okay? Because oh my gosh, you know you guys have an amazing mentor. But nevertheless. So first and foremost, congratulations, everybody, for being on this call. Like she said, you know, this is something that's always been, um, we actually started doing this a couple of months ago as well, and it's really fun to do, you know, to have something to shoot for and to not wait until the last day of the month to go for it. And like she said, not push, but, you know, like motivate yourself. So I just want to say congratulations for all of you guys, and I want to apologize ahead of, ahead of time. I broke my laptop a couple of weeks ago and I've been searching for my presentation and I packed my external drive. So I'm just going to be really vivid with my shares and my story, okay? Um, but maybe I'll share, I'll send her some pictures later on once we, like I said, I was moving at Jennifer's like, I'm like, okay, don't worry. I'm going to figure it out. Confession, I just got ready like 20 minutes ago. You should have seen me. I was like, honey, I got to get ready. I got to call. <laughs> so we've been packing the house is almost empty but um so here's something you might want to write down everything is everything you can figure everything out if you wait until everything so i think so many people say like when blah 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 then i will blah 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 that never happens like when everything is together, when my life is like people, I feel like sometimes we feel like life is going to pause and then you're going to go. Okay, It does not work that way. But you might want to write this down. When things matter, you'll figure it out. Right. And so when Jennifer asked me to do this call, my initial instinct was like, I can't. I'm going to be moving and like, you know, and and then I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. Don't worry. Yes, don't worry. I'm going to figure it out. Let's just do it. Right. And guess what I did? I knew I had the call. You know, I've been working, packing, working, packing. I stopped at a specific time, went and got ready. And here I am after this, I'll go back, you know, to continue doing my thing. So you just got to figure things out. And obviously, if you're on this call today, it's because you're doing that okay so first let me tell you a little bit about myself um so my name is Carla yes I'm second generation Herbalife so type on the chat if any of you guys have family um that don't like this business or that are like shut up <laughs> with your Herbalife put me on the chat if you have anyone like that because I was that kid okay uh, my parents started this all right everybody yes haha ha, okay all right so my parents started this business all right yes all of you guys and uh so Teresa you put years don't worry it takes years to have us come around okay so you were right there with the years thing anyhow my parents actually funny story I found Herbalife could you imagine had they signed me up first oh my gosh I would be like 
Anyway, things happen for the way that they're supposed to happen. But my mother and I, we found Herbalife. And so I'm going to tell you my story. But through my story, I want you guys to write down some ideas. And I'll guide you on what I feel have been things that have Cause see the way you're exposed to stuff ends up kind of being your lessons, right? So anywho, I had just seen um, Pretty Woman. Okay, I don't know if any of you guys like that movie, but I was like 16, 15 years old or 16, I can't remember. And I had seen Pretty Women. I was like Pretty Woman, and I was like, oh my god, right? And get Richard Gere was his businessman. I've always loved business. I was a little girl. We used to, you know, people play dolls. We used to literally play business. We used to put up a store, and then I would have you come, and you would buy things that you didn't get to keep but like you know the vases and like a lipstick and then you had to bring it back because it wasn't ours but we just pretended that we were playing store okay so I always had a business since I was little oh my god I just realized that right now talking to you guys since I was little I mean I didn't really play dolls like we played business and I had a business when I was little anyhow and um so I watched this movie and I was like international business I don't know if you remember that he had like companies that he took apart and all this stuff and fast forward, my parents were arguing, okay, and they were talking about money. And, you know, I want you guys to think about where you were before you said yes to Herbalife or where you were before you found this business. I'm not trying to preach. I respect all religions, beliefs, or if you don't believe, okay, but I do personally believe that there is someone, something that's guiding us. And my parents were arguing about money. My dad wanted to start this business. My mom was like, no, 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 no. And they were arguing. Two weeks later, my mother and I were driving down this main boulevard and we turn around and we see this big sign that said clearance. It was a factory, a leather factory couches. And my mom turned around and we went in. Why did we go into a store when we had no money? I personally believe that it was God or whoever you believe in the universe was like, okay, come on, come on. And they were like pulling us by the ear, like, come on, come on, let's go this way, right? Because my parents had been looking and talking and discussing about money. We go in there and the guy's like hearing us speak Spanish, okay? And here's what he asks, okay? And I, this we don't talk about this that much anymore, I think, like we used to. But I'm going to give you the phrase that not only changed our family, but changed his family, okay? He has now passed away. And guess what? His children are taken care of because he had, listen to me, the courage to ask one simple question and follow up. And that was, you might want to write this down. And she, he said, I mean, he talked to us a little bit. Where are you from? It wasn't like all weird, okay? He talked to us a little bit. And then he asked this question. He said, who do you know in Mexico that would like to make some extra money? Now, I don't know. This is like in the late nine, early 90s, okay? Back then, I'm sure it's still like this now. Drugs were very, very heavy. And we're from a state called Michoacan. My mom is hilarious, okay? And so my mom's like, we're not that kind of Mexicans. And the guy's like, no, not that herbs. It's Herbalife. It's a nutritional company. And long story short, he talked to my dad. My dad hung up on him like two, three times. And the guy, my dad finally said, you want to talk to me about business? You come to me. So my question to you here on the line is, are you willing, do you want this bad enough that you're going to go get it? Or are you always waiting for things and people and opportunities to come to you? Right? Imagine if he would have been like, well, no, if you really want this business, my dad, my dad didn't even know what Ron was offering. See, so many times our preferred members, our client, our, cons our people that come to our club, they don't know what we're offering. They have no clue. And sometimes because we do, we're like, well, if they really want it and we get all like sassy about it, you roll your little head like this and you're like, well, if they really want it, they will come. No, they don't know. So we got to go to them sometimes. We have to approach we get to we get to talk to them. We get to tell them. We get to show them, right? We get to expose them. We get to invite them. Now, they have the choice, obviously, right? But my dad told him, if you really want me to know about this business, yes, don't wait for it to happen exactly, Mike and Sheila. And, you know, he, the guy comes over, okay? And I'm not going to go through the whole story, but let me just tell you that he did not look like he was coming to talk to my dad about business. My dad is always dressed to the nine. Like, he will do yard work in Versace freaking shoes. I'm like, 
what are you doing wearing those shoes in the garden? And he's like, oh, like, you know, my dad is always, has always dressed to the nine, okay? So when the guy comes over in a tank top and a hat and these flip gloves, my dad is like, this guy's gonna talk to me about business? So write this down, never judge. Never judge, never prejudge anyone. This man, Neymaron Rivera, okay, I don't know how you say it in English, que paz descanse is how we say it in Spanish, okay? May he rest in peace, I think is how you say it in English. Um, you know, he was a brilliant man in network marketing. We didn't know, my dad didn't know that this man who was with the backwards hat and flip-flops and all this stuff was gonna literally be his mentor and that was gonna change his life. So don't expect that, you know, people come in different shells, but you don't know what they have inside. You don't know what they have in here. You don't know what they have in their heart. You don't know what they've experienced. That goes not only for your downline, it goes for your sidelines, and it also goes for your upline. Maybe your upline right now doesn't look like a president's team member. But look, I tell you, we have, we have this thing in Spanish, in Mexico, that we say, no hombre, por. there's no ugly woman, just poor husbands. <laughs> okay, it's like a joke, okay? In other words, money can fix everything physically, right? You can get some hair done, you got some gray, you dye it, you look different, right? It, for those things, you need money. So the guy comes and shows them, I saw my parents build this business. I never wanted to have anything to do with it. I thought I was too good for this business. I was like, they're selling shakes and tablets. OMG, how embarrassing, right? But I loved the products. At 16 years old, disclaimer, 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 you need to eat well, blah, blah, blah. okay? I lost 18 pounds. I felt amazing. I was able to go to the restroom regularly, okay? I don't know, men don't know this, but women, we don't wake up and poop like you do, okay? So it was like, okay, am I the only one on here? You guys are all laughing, like, okay, so I'm just keeping it real, okay? So nothing you don't know about me, I don't sugarcoat things. Um, so I was like, oh my God, I'm going to the restroom. Oh my God, because I started going to the restroom, guess what, my headaches went away. The products didn't cure my headaches. I started drinking water, I stopped drinking soda. I started making life lifestyle changes and my friends from school were like what are you doing so get this okay if you might want to write this down I mean obviously you guys are not stuck because you're on this call you're in a qualification call but maybe this will serve you at some point in your business or you have someone in your business that's like stuck get a new result I know I know you hear this all the time listen I do too okay but I cannot wait to like get, have that, that new product, give me that glow, right? Some people that took it before it came out, cause you know, the product committee, I see their skin. I'm like, oh my God, I want that, right? And so that can be a new result. People ask me all the time, what do I do for my hair? It's called collagen in everything I drink, right? I'm 43, I need, the other day I told my husband, oh, my skin's a little soft, I need to drink more collagen and herbal lifeline, right? Whatever. You need a new result because then all of a sudden you get excited. Write this down. CR7 and liftoff fixes everything, right? You're in a bad mood. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm like obsessed with CR7. I think they should take Christian Ronaldo's picture off the bottle, put me on there because I got to tell you, if you ask anybody, what is Carla's favorite product? They'll be like, CR7. Okay, CR7 and Liftoff together are like my drink whenever I'm in a bad mood. If I'm mad at my husband, I just, I'm like, give me five minutes. <laughs> and then I'm like, what's up? Like it puts you in the best mood, right? So that result turned into a business opportunity. I was only 16 years old, right? Yes, Courtney, you feel me? And uh, people in high school were like, what are you on, right? And uh, I ended up making $1,300 at 16 years old. So, you know, everyone was like talking about the tea. I would sell tea, I would sell shakes. You know, I would sell the products here and there. And you know, to not make a long story, I was like, I'm gonna quit school and I'm gonna do this business. And my mom's like, um, no, you're not. So I went off to college, came back. And when I came back from, I went to USC. Um, it's a private school here in LA and um, and when I came back, I went to Spain and I came back from Spain, my parents had hit president's team. And legally, I cannot tell you how much they were making, but let's just say they, would, they were making what people make a year in a month. 
And I was like, with your yerba life, I would, that's how I would call it. I was such a naughty teenager. So if you've got those people that are annoying and that make fun of you, write this down. It's a matter of time. I want you to literally write that down. It's just a matter of time. But for that, you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You have to be that example. Because here's the deal. I heard this one time from Susan Peterson's um, former husband, John Peterson. I love that he once said this. He said, you will have stages in your business and in your life, really. Okay. Stage number one. Okay. He said, so I love it. You guys are all taking notes. Teresa and Ann. Andreen, oh my God, I'm not even going to butcher your name, okay? But he said the first phase is that they're going to make fun of you, okay? And that's with everything. You know, if you want, I, I live in LA. If anybody wants to be an actor or an actress or a singer, people are like, come on, get real. People will always make fun of the things they don't have the courage to go for. They don't have the courage to go for those dreams, so it's easier to make fun of someone who's going after them. So don't think that people are just making fun of you because you're doing Herbalife. Okay? They'll make fun of you if you want to be an actor. If, they, if you are dreaming big, you bet your butt they're going to, you're going to have some resistance. And it's not because what you're doing is not possible it's because the people that are criticizing you, you've got to look at who is doing it. I have an uncle, my dad has a cousin who started from the bottom, built his way up, owns a bunch of radio stations, became a multimillionaire in the radio station business, okay? When my father launched Herbalife, my uncle Amador, okay, he was like, go for it, compadre. Why? Because my uncle, too, had the courage to go after his dreams. Now, my other uncles who had had a job for 20,000 years, they were like, you're going to do what? And they made fun of him. So the people, you'll never, ever, ever, nobody who's ever gone for anything, an athlete, anything, I don't care what it is, if anyone has ever gone after something, they will never, ever, ever make fun of or ridicule or put down somebody else who's going after I don't care what. So whenever somebody is doing that, I'm going to encourage you. I want to shield you from what could possibly come your way. So whenever somebody does that, I want you to stop and be like, okay, that Mexican Carla girl, okay, with a lot of energy. I Look, I've only drank in a little bit, okay? But, you know, I just need a little bit of Sarah 7 and a lift off and a call to get me going, right? And, you know, I want you to remember that and be like, oh, yeah, she told me. And then look at who is telling you. Look at who's criticizing. Look at who has an opinion. And don't say anything. Just look. And then you just be smart and kill them with kindness and be like, you know what? Maybe you're right. And that's it. Walk away. Okay? So anyhow, I was that girl that was making fun of my dad. I was like, oh my God. But when I got back from school and went up to Spain and came back, they gave me their American Express. Okay. When I went to school, they put me through school. Then I went up to Spain and because my parents had already reached president's team, they gave me their American Express. I still know the number 3227123. That's all I'm going to tell you. I still know their American Express credit card number, right? And they gave it to me and I went off to Spain. When I came back, I got a job for three whole months, one 90 day plan, okay? And I hated it. Now here's the deal, right? Disclaimer, I was single, I wasn't married. And so I quit my job that I didn't like and I went to live with my parents and I started my Herbalife business. I started it with $6 to my name, okay? And a lot of desire. For those of you guys who are at, were at extravaganza, which I hope and I pray every single one of you were, okay? Type on one on the chat, please. I should see how many of you guys are on there. I should see every single one of you putting a one, okay? That was like an amazing event. What Eric Worre said, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Eric War, Eric Worre, whatever, Eric guy said, was exactly what I had. He said, you need three things to be successful in this business. And I think really anything, okay? And one of them, number one, was you got to be willing. 
Are you willing? Are you willing to get on the call? Are you willing to go to STS? And he, oh, you know what? Here's a, here's a, something that he didn't say, but Susan Peterson, the number one in I don't know how many thousand years in a row, she said this. She said, number one is a successful person, a successful distributor, successful leader, write this down, please, must be willing to be inconvenienced. I will never forget her saying that. And I remember because I was not willing to be inconvenienced when I first started. I was like, well, that's not convenient. The STS is not convenient. I was 23. I wanted to go out and have a good time. And, you know, I was dating and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I didn't want to go to no training, right? But she said, oh, you got to be willing to be inconvenienced. So Eric War said something different, right? You got to be willing, willing to learn, willing to go to trainings, willing to be inconvenienced, willing to whatever, right? Number two, he said, you got to be teachable, right? Are you teachable? Obviously, you guys are because you're on here. And for those of you guys who have your cameras off, I really hope that you're really listening because you qualified for this call, right? And you qualified for something, so you deserve to be like, getting all the info, right? So when you're going to a training, are you, you know, are you teachable? Are you taking the coaching? And here's the thing I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you one big tip of my success. I never take anything personal. Okay. Well, okay. I'm kind of lying on that one. If my dad tells me who's my sponsor, <laughs> I do take that personal Be disclaimer besides my parents coaching me. Cause you know, what do they know? They're a chairman's club member, but like they're my parents. They don't know. Okay. I still struggle with that. Okay. So if your kids don't pay attention to you, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, so besides my parents, when someone coaches me, I don't take it personal. Does it hurt? Yes. When they correct me, Yes. Does it, does it like sting a little bit? Yes. But here's the thing I love about myself. Okay. And I really do love this about myself. When somebody tells me something, I stop and I think about it. And then I think, okay, is what they're telling me? Is that something I need to change? Is that something I want to change? Is that something that's going to make me better? Is that something that is going to improve my life? And if the answer is yes, I think I, not in that moment, okay? It's like I process it. I send that person like, thank you for your lesson. Whether I call them or if I just spiritually, I send them that message. And then I do my absolute best to be mindful about those things changing. I don't want to be the same person I was six months ago. You shouldn't either. You should always strive to be better. I heard a podcast this morning and it said entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is the best self-development school out there because here as an entrepreneur you're really going to get to know yourself so and then number three you got to be hungry so I had six dollars to my name okay I was 23 years old I was willing because I wanted to get out of my parents house <laughs> okay so I was willing and I was very teachable not with my parents okay I'm just gonna I'm not gonna repeat that again but listen if your kids are in this business or if your brother, your sister, well, whoever family, my biggest recommendation, like this is what worked for me, is expose them to other people. Expose them to other, you, listen, I'm going to tell you something and I really mean this now as a mom more than ever. No puedes tener. You cannot have your children in a better place than in this business. I know that if my son were, he's four right now, okay, but if he were 15, 16, and Jennifer was like talking to him, I am not going to freak out. Like, oh, I wonder what she's telling him. I'm going to be like, I'm going to get away because I know that people in this business have a good heart and we care for one another. We have good intentions. So if anybody was talking to my, my son, like especially those that are president's team member, I know that they're pouring life into him. So bring those people around other people. Don't be like only me. No, listen, my team, they get sick of hearing me. So I have to expose them to other people. I am sure there is a lot that Jennifer could say to you, but why is she bringing guest speakers? Because you're hearing a different perspective, a different voice, a different energy, right? And so that is so important. So anyhow, so I wanted to get at my parents' house with $6 to my name. I got my butt to work. 
And just so I can let you know really quick, this is not typical, but very possible with a lot of hard work and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, my very first month, I made an extra $2,000. I want you to write these numbers down because they're going to sound kind of crazy, okay? I was 23 years old. Use my story for other people if you want. Not married, no children, living in my parents' house. And my very first month, okay, I made an extra $2,000. Well, yeah, when I actually started the business, okay? Let's talk about when I actually started the business after I graduated, okay? And six months later, I, was I, I uh, had qualified to get team with a $2,000 royalty check. For those of you guys on the line, I hope you know what that means. But that means my business, six months later, was producing $40,000 of business. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how I did this. Six months after that, I was qualified to millionaire team. So in 13 months, okay, in 13 months, from the moment I started, 13 months later, I was fully qualified millionaire team, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that I did that helped that happen. Besides hard work, I get so mad when people are like, I just worked hard. I'm like, dang it, what did you do, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what I did, okay? So if you're ready, put ready on the chat while I get some drink. If you wanna know how I got to Millionaire Team, I was making a year, a year after I started, I was making $5,493.28. Three months later, it jumped to $7,000. A year and a half in this business, I was making $8,060. $8,000 a year and a half. 24 years old. Okay? I thought I was so rich. That's a lot of money, though, okay? I don't care how old you are. $8,000 is a lot. I later on, I don't have time today, but so I want to show you how I did it. I made a lot of mistakes. I spend more money. Don't, don't do that, okay? Don't, don't do that. Be smart with your money. But anyhow, so let me tell you what I did, okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. So grab a pencil, grab a pen. Number one, okay? I had a daily practice. So I, I went to a training, okay? I went to a training and I heard someone say that you got, you write this down, make your day a routine, now, you're talking to a woman who loves change and gets bored really easily. So when he said, make your day, uh, make your day a routine, I was like, I literally, I remember I was, at, I was in Long Beach Convention Center, and I remember thinking like, how boring. And then he said, and for those of you who think that's boring, let me show you what my routine did. And he went, boom, boom, and showed the houses and the cars and the, I was like, okay, I am going to do a daily routine, okay? So here's the deal, okay? For those of you guys who are like me, who don't like, like, I change everything all the time, okay? Good thing I'm a loyal person because I still have the same husband. But like, I'll change music, I'll change workouts. Like in the middle of my workout, I will change it. Like I drive people crazy. So when I hear about a routine, I was very like turned off. So what got me to do it? Okay, and here's what it what 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 it did for me. And I know you've probably already heard this before, but I really pray that you really listen and take it in this time. Because see, we hear things. We hear things, but do we really listen and take it in, okay? That day, I really heard this gentleman. He showed his cars and his lavish lifestyle, and I was like, Sign me up for this routine thing, okay? So I, let me tell you what I did, okay? So how I got myself to do it was I had every night before I went to sleep, no joke, I would literally think about, some of us will do more to avoid pain and some of us will do more to gain pleasure. I am the type of person that I like will do more to avoid pain. So like, I didn't like the way I lived. I looked around, I was living with my parents. No judgment, okay, this is just for me. I felt like the biggest freaking loser. I'm like, I went to college and I'm in this condition. I don't have a car, I don't have money. I looked at everything I didn't have and I was like, I don't wanna live like this. And that hunger, that like, that being sick and tired of living like that is what got me every single morning to wake up, he, write this down, wake up every single day at the same time, okay? Waking up at the same time. I could literally tell you my schedule. If you wanna write this down, I'll speak slow, okay? I woke up at six, okay? I was ready and out the door by seven. 
Now, the times are different, okay? Because now we got Facebook and Instagram and nutritional clubs. But back then, we didn't have any of that, okay? So I'm going to tell you what I did because I don't want to lie to you. And then I'll tell you what you can do now that you can make it work the same, okay? But I was out, I was ready and out the door by 7. I would drive down to the main city because my parents live with the rich people, okay? So I was like, I need to go to the regular people, middle class people. So I would drive down to Sacramento. And here's what I would do. I, I would do. From eight to three, okay, I did advertising. Today, you could do from eight to three, you can, you can choose your advertising. You can do in-services, tea drops, talk to people, whatever. For me, I did 300 flyers and 50 pull tabs. Does anybody know what a pull tab is on this call? You do? Okay, yeah, see the old school people, <laughs> right? The old the, uh, Herbalife OGs, okay? <laughs> right? So you young generation, pull tabs are these things that at the bottom you pull the number, okay? So we would do these pull tabs or these like pocket things at the phone booth because back then people used to use phone booths, like a quarter and like that, okay? So we would put them everywhere. So I would do three. It doesn't matter, okay? The point is I had, write this down, from eight to, <laughs> yes, from eight, sorry, from eight to 11, I did advertising, so my question to you is, do you have a blocked time where you're working in, in your business? See, right now, you are working on your business. There's a difference. When you go to trainings, you're working on your business. When you're like these calls, you're working on your business. Okay, Teresa, you look like you're in deep thought. Yes? Okay, I love it, I love it, right? So you're working on your business, but do you have time to work in your business? And I really make an emphasis on this because I have been, I have fooled myself, okay? To think that, oh, I'm working. See, this call right now, you are working, but you're working on your business. You're getting knowledge, you're getting like all that. Now the question is, are you doing something in your business? doing contacts, sending out messages, doing your follow-ups. Do you have a block time to do that? That's what I mean by making your day a routine. Like every day from 8 to 11, that's what I did. Okay? And then from 11 to 1, from 11 to 1, I went into the businesses. I heard John Tartle talk about him doing business to business, business services. Back then we didn't have nutritional clubs. Now you can make a delicious tea and drop through tea drops and all that stuff. So much fun. We didn't have that. We used to never combine tea and aloe. It was just straight tea. It's like, Ugh. I'm like, no, it's really good. Okay. You guys are so spoiled. Okay. I still love original tea. I still love original aloe. Okay. I'll drink the other ones, but if it's there, I'm like, Ooh, original LO. <laughs> okay. Anyway, focus Carla. So do you have time to work in your business? Okay. So that's what I did. <laughs> yes. OG. So from eight to 11 and then from 11 to one, why 11 to one? Can somebody guess why 11 to one type it on the chat? I might send you a gift. Why 11 to one or unmute yourself. Yes, Teresa, I'm going to send you something. Okay, so 11 to 1, yes, because that was lunchtime. Okay, that was lunchtime. So guess what I did? I went into businesses, okay, and guess what happened? As I went into businesses, I would talk to the person behind the counter, and I would be like, like let's say it was Maya. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, let's say Maya, right, beautiful young lady, and I would go to her, and I'd be like, hi, and she was like, hi, how can I help you? See, they're a business, so they have to, like, be nice to you, because they want your business, right? So then I would be like, hi, um, actually, let's just say it was like a bakery, okay? I was like, actually, I'm not really here to buy um, bread today, and my name was Erica, okay? I was an employee of Carla, okay? That's how I psyched myself out, okay? I pretended to be someone else, and I was like, 
Um, hi, my name is Erica. Um, I actually, I, I um, my, my, you know, I'm, I have to think in English. Hold on. I am working for somebody who is starting their business around this area and they're looking for people that want to make some extra, they're looking for people to make some extra income around, and I would speak loud, okay, around their current schedule. So I was wondering if I could just leave these little businesses card, here's the key, write this down, somewhere where they don't bother you. Because see, if I said that, they couldn't say, well, that's going to bother us. I just literally told them, somewhere where it won't bother you. And then Maya, maybe she was an employee. She'd be like, I don't know. Hold on. Let me ask Mike and Sheila. My, you know, and then Mike and Sheila would come out and I would talk to them. But between the time I talked to Maya and Mike and Sheila, people were listening. And some of them would come up to me and be like, excuse me, I couldn't help to hear, you know, what is that about? And because my name was Erica and I was an employee of Carla, I would be like, you know what? I really don't know, but there's a number here. Back then we used to have this thing called touch phone. Nowadays you can do Google, Google phone or whatever, right? Google number. But it wasn't my cell phone because I'll tell you what I learned really quick. But anyway, the point is I would do the work and I was out there. So I found an excuse a reason to talk to people because I wasn't comfortable just going up to people to talk to them. So here's my question to you. What are you doing to expose your community to you? What are you doing? Right? And if you're not doing anything, what could you do? Could you maybe do some, who doesn't love free things? Do like little, those thingies, those, those little cup thingies are like two ounces, make a tea you know, make it delicious and then put it and then go and drop it off to, you know, I'm about to move. So guess what I'm going to do with all my neighbors? I'm going to go introduce myself and guess what I'm going to do? I am going to give them little care packages and it's not going to be cookies. It's going to be tea bombs, right? Like what can you do? Write this down. Creativity, make it big. I am not the most creative person in the world. So guess what I do? I copy. I am a masterful copycatter. I copy everything. I don't think I've ever come up with anything on my own. I don't think I have. I copy it and then I make it my own. I make it my own, right? So I say this because this is what I did. And as I was doing this, okay, so make your day a daily routine. As I was doing this, okay, the next thing I want you to write down that was a key for my success was that I was... And they said so much about this at the extravaganza. And I will confess, I need to get better at this now. Because back then, I was doing, write this down, five-star follow-up. Five-star follow-up. What do I mean by that? When somebody tapped me on the shoulder when I was doing the business to business and they were interested and they called and they left the number, I actually called them back. I will confess, there have been times that I'll do personal contacts and I forget to call you know, on, on dream, cream, tone, back, right? I forget. And then I see that number later and then I'm embarrassed to call them. I don't know if I'm the only one on this line who is like that, right? My mom's like, Carla, they don't pay. My mom one time found this list of all these numbers. And she goes, Mija, what is this? I'm like, I mom, they're people's, people's numbers that I got, but I've never called them. And my mom goes, Mija, do you know they don't pay you for numbers on a list? I'm like, yeah, 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 mom. See, see why I don't listen to my parents? They're like hard truth, right? But they don't. And so here's the thing. When I first started my business, that first 13 months, the reason I grew so fast is because I always asked myself one question. And the question is, I would always ask myself, what could I do to solve this problem? What could I do to make this better? Whenever a client would call me and they would be like, um, hey, I saw your tea bombs or your, they don't call them that, right? I saw that drink you made. It look so good. What do you, how do you do it? I would think, what could I do to solve this problem? Record a video. I was always thinking about how I could improve my business. So in combination of well, four, th five things really. Number one, I made my day a daily routine. I could tell you from eight to 11, from 11 to one, I would drive home and I would eat from one to three. I would eat and I would take a nap, okay? Between one and three, I got eating, nap, and like a 30 minute nap. I, I can lay down for 10 minutes and I'm like, woo, I'm ready to go again, okay? But I would nap for like 30 minutes. I would wake up at three o'clock. I would do calls from three to five. 
And at five o'clock, I would get ready because at six o'clock, I had to be in my car to drive down to Sacramento because we used to do live HOMs, live business opportunity meetings. So that was my routine. I still know it after however many years later from eight to 11, 11 to one, one to three, three to five, five to you know six. And then I would get in the car, go do the HOM from seven to nine. Okay. So that was my day. Every single day, every day, every day. Every day, every day, every day, like every day, like every day, like every day, every day, every day, every day, like every day, like every day, like every day, like really every day, every day. I was happy. I would do it. The boyfriend was mad at the time. I would do it every day, every day. I was so tired of living how I was living. I didn't have a car. Like how did I do it? My brother took me. My brother, my brother would drive and I would do the pull tabs and I would talk to people. He would drop me off in the corner. Literally like pretty woman, huh? So I would drop off in the corner and he would pick me up later. Like every day. So my, you know, you guys don't have to do that nowadays. We have nutritional clubs. We have fit camps. We've got weight loss challenges. We got online challenges. You got Facebook. You got Instagram. You got TikTok and house club or clubhouse or whatever the thing is called. You got all these tools. And I think that's sometimes the challenge today. You've got so much. You don't know what to do. So I'm going to give you a solution. Find what you love. Listen, I'm about to do a nutritional club. I tried this whole Instagram, uh, uh, what do you call this thing? Social media thing. It's not really me. I cannot get myself to be consistent with it. Okay, but guess what? I really, 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 really gave it an effort. It just not me. I miss talking to people. I miss, you know, like, I don't know. And I'm not really a hugger, but I miss hugging people. Okay, if you hug me, don't worry, I'll hug you back. Okay, don't freak out. But I'm not that person. You know, people are like, oh my God. Like, I'm not that person, okay? But I love hugging people and I love getting hugs, okay? But, you know, I miss all that. So I found myself back then doing things because I didn't have a choice. Now we've got so many choices. So my, 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 my recommendation to you is a couple of things. Number one, if you've got a job and you've got like this schedule, Look at your schedule at your job and be like, okay, look, I take a 15 minute break here, a lunch break here, a 15 minute break here. That is at least an hour. I don't know about Florida or wherever you're at, but here in California, legally, they have to give you a 15 minute break every three hours and a minimum of a half an hour lunch break. So if you got two 15 minutes and a half an hour, that's an hour. Now, you could go and swipe and talk to your neighbors and all this kind of stuff. Or you can be like, oh my God, you know what? I have a call. I got to go. And you go into your car and you sit there for those 30 minutes. You eat, you know, in five minutes, drink a shake in 30 seconds. And the rest of the 25 minutes of your lunch break, you get to work. And what are you going to do? You're going to put your head down, put your phone on do not disturb so you don't get the notifications. You don't get distracted. If you're like me, I get distracted so easily. Okay. And get your booty to work. What are you going to do? The most important thing you can do is to fill up your pipeline. I find that the biggest challenge that we have today in my team, I don't know about you guys, in my team, the biggest challenge that my team, my team has is filling up the pipeline. I heard this from somebody once and I was like, oh my God, that is so true. And this is why I grew so fast in the beginning. I had no skills at selling, recruiting. I had no skills. So all I did was focus on one thing and one thing only. And that was my entire focus was on prospecting. If you can focus on prospecting, like filling in your pipeline, like heavy pipeline fitting, everything else would, will solve itself because you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. You can never say the right thing to the wrong person. You just can't. Sometimes we think it's us. It's not us. It's your energy, of course. Could you get better? Absolutely. Could you learn to present the business? Absolutely. But when somebody is not looking for an opportunity, Andrea, when somebody is not open to change, Teresa, I don't care if you're Mark Hughes himself, they won't. And then you have someone like my father who was looking for change. 
And this guy with the backwards hat, flip flops and a tank top and really ugly toes told him about the business. My father was all ears. So yes, you want to get better, but if you focus on filling up your pipeline, that's going to help you dramatically. So I did a daily practice, a daily routine. I did massive five star follow up. When people were interested, I called them back. Okay. Number three, to wrap this up. Okay. The third thing that I did. Okay. Yes. I sold products. Yes. All of that. But the biggest thing that I learned was to always present the business. So I was always promoting the business. I was always promoting making extra money. For those of you guys who have nutritional clubs, I'm going to give you a big tip. I'm about to open my own club. And I told my sister-in-law who I'm opening it with, I said, we have got to be crystal clear what our intention is with this nutritional club. If our intention is to just make cash, just make money, then yeah, let's sell shakes, let's sell teas, let's sell all that stuff and make a lot of money. Because let me tell you, you can make a lot of money with the clubs. I've had one, okay? It's really good income. But I told her if our intention is yes to make money, yes to, you know, the, who doesn't like nice things? But if our intention is to duplicate, our intention is to get preferred members, get distributors, have them one day open a satellite club or nutritional club of their own, then our eye needs to be towards that. And when we give somebody the tea and we say, hey, Maya, how you like that tea? Hey, BJ, who else do you know? Hey, Mike, who do you know that would like to make some extra money? Mike and Sheila might be like, we just bought a new house. We need new furniture. I want to learn how to make some extra money. But if we don't ask, you don't know. So the third thing I did right was I was always focusing on the business. Now, Sheila and Mike might be like, no, I, no, I'm not interested. But why do you have so much energy? And I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you about our products. Right? And so that's one of the things that I did a lot. Number four, okay, I never... And I can literally tell you this, even when I didn't want to go, I never missed a training. Never. I never missed an STS. And I had to drive two hours, you guys. I had to wake up at six in the morning. I was 23 years old. Don't give me an excuse. Okay. And I have a child now. I now know how hard it is. I get it. I get it. Trust me. I now get it. I get it. It's not, it's not easy. But when there's a will, there's a way. I always tell, you know, I'm Hispanic, so we have a lot of parties. And I tell my team, why is it that you can find a babysitter for a quinceañera, a sweet 16, or a wedding? But you can't find it for an... I don't tell them like that, okay? I'm just telling you guys like that. But that's really what I want to say. I say, you guys, you know, I smile, right? I'm like, you guys, you know, pretend it's a wedding. Because <laughs> I know I can be a little hard, right? But it's like, people don't see that. And if you are anything like me, okay, I'm really working on not being so bothered still after all these years, even though I know that Andrew Taylor and Matt and Jonica and Cricket here, even though I know that they really want the business and then they don't go to an STS as an example, I still get bothered. Okay, it still gets under my skin. And even though I know they say that you caring is your best gift and also your weakest, right? Because I care, which is the beautiful thing about me, and it's not the beautiful thing about me, right? So even though I know this, here's what I want you, here's what I'm going to tell you, okay? And if this can serve any of you, okay? And that is that I am learning, even after all this point, so if I can save you years of, of, of this, okay, is that I am just learning to accept people, for who they are and for where they are. For who they are and for where they are. Because what I've learned by watching other people, and this is why you've got to be around other people. I partnered up with a girl named um, uh, Carmen Mireles. Okay, she is everything I'm not and I'm everything she's not, which is a beautiful combination. We're different organizations. But she's so like calm and composed and i'm over here like oh my god i can't believe they didn't come right and she's just like carla 
I'm like, Carmen, how do you do it? And then she told me, I've just finally, she's so cute, right? That's how she talks. I just realized, like, I cannot want it more than they do. And I'm like, and you know, my husband's like, it's because you're a control freak, Carla. I'm like, oh, and I think that's really what it is. Okay, if I'm really honest, I would love to control their future. I would love for them to have what I have. We just bought a brand new home and we gave a, I cannot say, cause it's called a, but we gave her huge down payment. I told my husband, we're not taking hardly any furniture. We're taking just a couple of pieces. Yesterday, ladies, I say ladies, because maybe men are not so much into this. I went into the store and the lady goes, what's your budget? I'm like, I don't have one. And I literally, I did not look for the, I didn't, I didn't even want to ask how much is that couch? I just said, I like that couch. And I, I did not, it felt so good to not have to ask how much is that? And at the very end, when she told me how much it was, I was like, all right, here we go. Here's the credit card, right? And we're not even done, right? It was like two rooms. But see, I want people to live like that. I want them to have, you know, and I think it's because I, you know, my parents are 70 and uh, if you saw their home, it's crazy, right? And so in closing, I'm going to tell you guys this, okay? This business is literally, and I, you guys, coming from somebody who I was like, yerba life, who made fun of it, who criticized my father for talking, breathing, walking, sleeping, pooping, everything, herbal life. I was like, shut up with your yerba life. And I'm like, you're not even going to make any money off me. Stop talking about it. I am now his third diamond. <laughs> okay. He gets money every month from my organization and once a year with his annual bonus. <laughs> okay. So be careful what you say, um, but just be patient. And I think about that. I think, you know, my father and my mother gave me space to decide, right? So number four, I went to trainings. And number five, okay, is I've never stopped dreaming. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I've hardly ever stopped dreaming. There's been times in my business, I'm not gonna lie, that I was jaded and I wondered if this was for me and I wondered if I still wanted to do this, okay? And I gotta tell you, there was one time right before I got to president's team, okay? I feel that somebody maybe needs to hear this. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I hope Jennifer doesn't kill me for saying this. But there was one time that I was millionaire team for, a, well, what I felt was a long time, five years, okay? And I was like, maybe this is not for me. Maybe I should get a job. And I remember thinking that I was millionaire team. I remember calling one of my friends and here's something that is so important. If you guys can give me three more minutes, I, I don't know why something tells me to tell you this. So maybe someone needs to hear this. I've never told this story before. I was in my apartment in the city that I'm about to move back into. I was in a condominium. I was a millionaire team member. And I remember feeling so stuck in my business. I had just broken up with the relationship. I was fat. I was, um, had gained a lot of weight. I had chichis on my back. Chichis means boobs. I had boobs on my back. And I remember calling one of my friends who doesn't do Herbalife, but he's very wealthy. He's a business owner. And I remember calling him and I said, Jay, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I want to do Herbalife anymore. And he's like, Sandoval, what? You're like Miss, you know, Herbalife. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Maybe I should get a job. <laughs> and he said to me, you're unemployable. And I was so offended. I'm like, what do you mean I'm unemployable? He's like, no one's going to hire you. I'm like, what do you mean? Yes, they are. I'm like, no, they're not. Because you, have, once you have experienced freedom, no employer is ever going to want, if they know that you've been an entrepreneur, they're not going to hire you. Because when, once, you have, once you have experienced what it's like to live life on your own terms and to have the financial freedom, to have the time freedom, because he owns a business. He goes, they know that it's just a matter of time where you're going to quit and go back. So why don't you employ yourself again? Remember the 8 to 11, 11 to 1 to 1 to 3 to 3 to 5? Remember that? He's like, why don't you employ yourself again? He's all, Sandoval, excuse one little bad word. like, get your ass to work. The problem is that you have so much free time. You're not doing anything. That's why you feel so discouraged. And he said, listen, roly-poly. 
He's like, lose the weight, because I was really heavy. He's like, lose the weight and get your butt back to work. And I cried after I got off the phone, but like I have friends that tell me nothing but the truth. And I'm gonna encourage you, if you can handle it, to have friends that have the courage to tell you the truth. And don't, don't, don't make people walk on eggshells around you. And um, you know, I've never told them, I should call him. I don't know why, I've never told this story before. And, um, and I, you know, and I said, you know, I cried and he made me cry. I remember that day I even like had this metal thing cut. And I don't know if you guys can see that scar right here. This metal thing even fell and cut me. And, um, and then anyway, so I don't know, every time I see that scar, it reminds me of that day. But, you know, I just want to say, you know, you guys, this is an amazing opportunity and it is, it will respond according to how you treat it. See, at the beginning, I treated it like a million dollar business. I remember telling myself, I'm going to have a million dollar business. I'm going to have a million dollar business. And I would get in my car and I would sing and I would be like, ladies and gentlemen, like literally this is what I would do. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome your next international president's team member, Carla Sandoval. And I was like, wow, like I was driving, you know, and there was a song by Francisco Cespes called La Vida Loca. And it talks about how... This is the life that, that I have, that someone chose for me to live, a crazy life, a life, a life of distress, a life of challenges, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And I would listen to that song every single day, walk, driving up to my parents' house, and I would cry almost every single day driving up there because I felt like I, I had to get out of my parents' house. And it was, that was the drive that got me to, got me to work, got me to mill team so fast was that I worked hard. I like always was thinking about what I was going to do to make my business better. I never missed a training. Okay. And I was always dreaming. I was always like going to the nice stores. I was always like looking at the nice things and thinking like one day this is going to be for me. One day this is going to be mine. So for all of you guys, congratulations for, you know, qualifying for this amazing call. I'm going to tell you, and I want, I want you to finish with this, okay? Here's a, here's a key that I heard today. I was like, oh my God, this is so relevant for this call. Once you have momentum, it is easier to keep it than to start it all over again. And that hit me hard because I have a tendency to go hard and then be like, ah, and then lose the momentum and then go hard again. It's like I have this thrill of doing that. And when I heard that today, I'm like, you know, that is something that I get to work on is to create momentum and it's easier to continue it than to start all over again. So you already have momentum. You know, it is the 19th. You already did 15th by the 15th. And um, I just pray and I hope that something that I said today hit your heart. And more importantly, that you put it into action and you put it into, you know, into your business. Because I'm telling you, this business literally, 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 not only will it change your life, but it will change who you are. And I am more proud of the woman that I have become. And I got a lot of work to do. Ask my husband, okay? I am more proud of the woman that I have become than in the material things and in the money that I've created, okay? Although I love the money, I love my purses, and I love the money and the every. I love all of that, okay? Universe, keep giving it to me. But I am more proud of who this business has allowed me to grow into because it's going to make me a better mother. It, I want, my, I want my, my son will one day say my mom was a bad woman, right? And, um, and that's what I feel is one of the most beautiful things about this business is that the person that you get to become. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for the invitation. Thank you for everybody for listening so attentively. And uh, I cannot wait to see you guys in person very soon. Oof, oh man, I'm I'm emotional right now. <laughs>